Hey everyone, it's Melanie of our Studio 320 and it's time for a new project. I have two end tables here. They're identical and I want to transform them. I want to do something creative. I don't know yet what it's going to be, but uh, hopefully it'll be something cool. If you haven't subscribed yet, I really would appreciate it if you take a moment right now and press that red button. You can also follow me on Instagram and find me on Etsy where I am selling some of my past projects that I have done right here on my channel. Stick around. <laughs> Let me just say right off the bat that it is so cold right now. I am not a fan of winter. Anyway, I used a 60 grit on these two tables. They were solid wood, so I wasn't worried. I also wanted to do a different kind of leg. Um, my goal here was to kind of turn these into a couple of mid-century modern end tables, side tables, whatever you want to call them. And they were relatively easy to get off. You can see that there's actually three parts. There's the leg and then there's two decorative pieces on the side. And one piece in particular uh, gave me a little trouble and you will see a little bit more of that in a little while. I honestly wasn't sure what I was gonna do with this piece until I started working on it and the vision became clear. A little side note there, that's okay. Uh, if you're not quite sure what you want to do, just go ahead and start. You, you usually have to do the same things in the beginning that you would do on any piece and then I think it tends to just show itself. I am limited by some of my projects because of my tools, but that's how I shape my projects and that's okay. When I was preparing to put the legs on this piece, I realized that the corners were just a, just a hair higher than the rest of the bottom, so I needed to level that off with my orbital sander and a 60 grit sandpaper. Now, if you just got a random orbital sander, I don't recommend that you try this right off the bat. The random orbital sander is a little bit erratic. It moves in weird ways. And you have to get used to that before you try something like this. What I'm doing is I'm just getting rid of those sharp edges. And I will admit it isn't perfect, but it isn't something that needs to be perfect. It just gives a little bit of character to the piece. And I really like how it came out. This is a little bit of sculpting actually, and you do kind of need a steady hand. Um, and again, I wouldn't recommend this if you just got your orbital sander. Now that my corners are nice and level, I can easily put my legs on. However, you can see the grooves on either side of the corner, and that was a little difficult when I was drilling holes. And you'll see right here, I wanted to show you what happens is your little bit kind of slips. So what I did is I just put the leg right on there and held it in place to make my holes. And I just made a little bit of a hole and then I used my screws that were quite sharp on the end and it worked just fine. One thing I will say is when you're putting legs on, you need to see how it's going to be viewed from the other side so when you turn it over how it's you're going to see those legs and it's going to be different on every piece and you're going to have to make a decision whether you want them to be seen or not so this is a perfect example of learning by doing the first piece i did i put the legs on first and then i had to cover up the bottom or the top of the legs so I wouldn't get paint on them, along with all the other places I needed to tape off so I didn't get paint on them. 
and with the second one I realized it was easier to paint before I put the legs on. Here you see me putting on my plastic wood X wood filler after I painted with one coat. And I did that on purpose because it just is easier to see all the little pock marks that need to be covered up. Now here is that little part that I told you about earlier. I had that little piece that I couldn't get out. So I had to split the wood in parts to get it off and then pull that screw out. There was some stuff in the top of the screw that I couldn't get my screwdriver in, but I got it out. Now I'm just sanding off the wood filler and putting on another coat. So when I split that wood, uh, that decorative piece, I accidentally split a piece off the corner. It was already, there was parts of it that were broken that I had to repair. Now here, it was, I was having trouble getting that little piece in, so I put it in with a rubber mallet and then realized I couldn't get it back out to glue it. So I put the glue on the top and let it just seep down and then on the edges, and then I put the clamp on. And it actually worked really well. I can't even find it now. So I'm just wiping it off with microfiber now and covering up the sanded areas because I'm going to paint and I did that. And now I'm taking it off. I didn't think you needed to see me paint the second one, but you notice I don't have the legs on this time. So yeah, I learned. On the corner of one of the drawers, there was a significant piece of wood missing. And here I'm doing a little sculpting magic with my Plastic Wood X. Now Plastic Wood X is fairly soft, but you can build up with it and reshape things. Now, a lot of people use Bondo. I can't use that stuff. The fumes, well, they just knock me cold. So I prefer this. You have a little bit more control and you don't lose your mind. <laughs> So I'm using my um, finishing sanders. They're just like, they, almost, they remind me of leather. They're very thin and smooth, but they're really nice to smooth out the paint. And of course, while I'm doing that, I discovered more spots I needed to fill in. Okay, this is the part of the video that I'm staining the top and I have four different stains here. The one I have in my hand right now is a custom made stain with a Brazilian rosewood and a cherry color. The other three are antique uh, walnut and Kona, which is a very dark one, and a faded navy, I believe it's called. So I use a cloth, uh, they're disposable cloths. I use them for staining more than I don't because as you can see, you have a whole lot more control when you're using a cloth. And I really didn't know how I was going to do this until I started. And I thought it would be a good idea to take the, uh, the custom stain that I made and put it on the ends in the middle because they were the lightest areas and then put a dark, the Kona, right next to it to offer some really cool contrast. Now this is one of the parts that's a creative side and it's a personal thing. You have to do this the way you want. Uh, no one can tell you you have to do it a certain way. This is up to you. You can do it any way you want. <laughs> because everybody's different and everybody's gonna create differently. I'm adding the faded navy here and I just did that for some creative interest. Now I showed you there the green envy that's mineral spirits and I used that to clean off the stain off the paint. Remember, paint first and then stain. It makes your life much easier to clean off that stain and you don't have to be as careful comes off very easily with the mineral spirits. Now I'm doing the drawer basically the same as I did the top. Um, not identical, but the same concept. I thought you might like to see the second table 
Uh, even though it's basically the same as the first, it's going to turn out a little bit differently because I didn't do it exactly the same. Just think about all the different combinations you could come up with. And, you know, this is unusual for me to do something symmetrical, but, and, it, and it's not exact, but I think it's beautiful that no matter how many people decide to do this technique, none of them are going to look identical to mine. And that's a great thing. That's the beauty of creativity. Yay for creativity. <laughs> okay, small confession, I did actually do the corners before I tackled the top, just to get an idea of what it was going to look like with the colors that I chose. Okay, the hardware I chose is kind of a modern take on MCM. And I started with a vintage gold and then added champagne mist over that. Let that dry. And then my original idea was to paint them black and then add gold. And after looking at the stained top, I thought, wouldn't it be nice to add gold with a little bit of brown? So I taped off my hardware and <laughs> I am so stubborn I I just refuse to measure I like to use my eyes I like to measure that way just eyeball it sometimes it takes longer but it really is a good training exercise for your eyes now I'm using a flat burnished amber color it's very pretty it's got some red in it but it's a brown and I am spraying those areas that I did not tape off because I wanted a stripe that went right down to where you put the screws in. And you'll see in a minute what that looks like. And just a tip, I am wearing a respirator with the filters that are for vapors. You can learn more about that in my video on 10 must-haves for refinishing furniture. I must say I like them better in the video than I did here. I ended up painting those gold areas and going with just the tips. Well, it's time to put on the hardware and that means we are finished. But don't go yet. I have a message for you and the after pictures. Well, friends, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to tell you a couple of things. When you're dealing with stain and paint and they bump up next to each other, there are going to be spots where you're going to get paint on the stain. Why do I bring this up? Because it happened to me on this project. Because when you're sanding the edges here, you can't always see until you start staining and there it is right on the edge don't panic if that happens to you all you have to do is take your sandpaper go back and try and sand just the area that's painted so that you can go back and just put the stain right there where you sanded away the paint it's very simple to do, but it feels like such a frustrating thing when you see it. And this happens a lot because you're looking at this piece of furniture or a piece of art or whatever it is you're doing. You've been looking at it for hours and hours, days, months. I don't know, I don't know how long it takes you to do a project. Sometimes you just don't see it anymore until you walk away you get back and it's all finished and you're looking at it through someone else's eyes it happens my advice to you is take your time I have discovered that now I've changed my schedule to doing a video every other week it allows me the time to see the things that I want to correct without the rush because when you're doing a project every week it really does mean that you are not going to see the things you need to see. I recommend you slow down and take your time. Do it right the first time. <laughs> Thanks for being here. See you next time. Don't forget to stick around for the after pictures. You can do it. <laughs>
Just dream of gold.